This first song is called, Oh, What a Price. God made the universe and the stars up in the sky. He made all this beautiful for just you and I. He gave us a light to brighten up our way. Gave his only son, Jesus. Do you know him today? Yes, he sent his son to die on Calvary's tree. It took Jesus' blood that we might be free. He knew we were lost, so he paid the cost. But oh, what a price for a sinner like me. He'll take all your fears away and replace it with love. And assure you eternal life in heaven above. He made all this possible with the blood that he shed. From the power, from the pure sight of Jesus to the nails in his feet. Yes, he gave his only son to die on Calvary's tree. It took Jesus' blood that we would be free. It took a lot of love, but he paid the cost. But oh, what a price for a sinner like me. Yes, oh, what a price for a sinner like me. And that was sung by the singing Leadbetters back in the 70s, early 70s, the late 60s, early 70s in there. Very little information on it, you know, in the... Uh, as far as I know, that's, they're the only ones that really, uh, you know, it's really the only ones really available that sing it. And, um, but singing, you have to, in order to find it, you would have to, what you do, you know, uh, no quotation marks or anything. You just put in there, uh, you just put in there, oh, what a price. And in a dash or a hyphen, you put in there, not a dash, but a hyphen. You put in there, oh, what a price, hyphen, singing lead bedders, and, and it goes right to it. And uh, so uh, that's how you find it. <laughs> and you can see if you can make out some of this, you know, where it took me you know, over an hour just to figure out some of this where the words were slurred and everything. But uh, I got it pretty close. God made the universe and the stars up in the sky he made all this beautiful for just you and I he gave us a light to brighten up our way he gave his only son do you know him today Yes, he sent his only son to die on Calvary's tree. It took the blood of Jesus that we might be free. He knew we were lost, so he paid the cost. But oh, what a price! For a sinner 
like me. He'll take all your fears away and replace it with love and assure you eternal life in heaven above. He made all this possible with the blood that he was shed, that was shed from the pure side of Jesus to the nails in his feet. Yes, he gave his only son to die on Calvary's tree. It took Jesus' blood that we would be free. It took a lot of love, but he paid the price. But oh, what a price for a sinner like me. And um, that one there, that verse there, there was three or four of them. I finally figured them out uh, after listening to it about ten times. But this one here where it says, uh, this one place here where it says, he made all, all this possible with the blood that, uh, with the blood that something other, two or three words there that was blurred, uh, made all this possible with something that seemed to rhyme, rhyme with hands. Uh, it might, might have said with the blood that flowed from his hands. But he said he made all this possible with the blood that was shed. I just, I just wrote in, he made all this possible with the blood that was shed. From the pure side of Jesus to the nails in his feet. And when they said, they said feet, one time it would sound like hands and the other time it would sound like feet. And so it almost like sounded like he was. This song was saying, "Made all this possible with the blood from the stands, <laughs> from the pure side of Jesus to the nails in His hands." But it sounded like he was saying, <clears throat> "Made all this possible with the blood from the stands, or on which He stands, or something like that, from the pure side of Jesus to the nails in His hands." <clears throat> but uh, <clears throat> but uh, anyway, so I sung it saying, with the blood that was shed from the pure side of Jesus to the nails in his feet. And that is the only one that I, I, I just never could make out, no matter how many times I listened to it. <clears throat> but this next song, but that's the singing Leadbetters. And all you do is you don't put in quotation marks or anything. You just put the... Uh, the four words, oh, what a price, and uh, and then uh, then then a hyphen, and then singing lead bitters. That's a uh, and uh, that's on of course YouTube, and and don't just put oh what a price, it'll go all over. And while you put oh what a price, it goes all over the place through every kind of world it's on, you know. And uh, and you put what a price, it goes all over the place. Oh, what a price. Because there's all these people saying, <laughs> all these people on there saying, oh, what a price I paid for loving you and all the rest of that. <laughs> all kinds of crazy songs, you know. And so you have to put the singing lead betters or you'll never, you'll never go to it. <laughs> but those lyrics are correct uh, now, all except for that one place I'm not sure of where, whether he said uh, uh, what he said there about that uh, with the blood that was... Uh, from the hands or from the stands or was shed. You know, that's the only place. And uh, so uh, then this next song is called The Blood Will Never Lose Its Power. <laughs> this was easy to understand. The blood will never lose its power. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. 
it will never lose its power. It soothes my doubts and it calms my fears and it dries all of my tears. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power, for it reaches to the highest mountain, and it flows to the lowest valleys, the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. And that was written in 19, or oh, that was uh, put to music in 1962 by Andre Crouch uh, from the, a text, a poem, a text that was written by Thurston, T-H-U-R-S-T-O-N, Thur Thurston G. Frazier, Thurston G. Frazier, and his original uh, title was "It Will Never, It Will Never Lose Its Power." It didn't have that blood in it; it just said it will never lose its power. But then Andre Crouch adapted it to me as part of the song about the blood, and he put the music to it in 1962. Oh, I, I, I thought it went back further than that, but. Uh, He's 1962, I guess, was about the time when... Anyway, so this one was... Um, uh, the blood will never lose its power. The blood that Jesus shed for me Way back on... Calvary, the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. It soothes my doubts and it Calms my fears, and it dries all my tears. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. For it reaches to the highest mountain, and it flows to the lowest valleys. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its it will never lose its power. The blood Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. Okay, let's go on. <laughs> Beautiful song. <laughs> I never said I was Andre Crouch, though. So <laughs> uh, but... Uh, this next song is called Because He Lives. 
God sent His Son. They call Him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. And it the grave is there to prove my Savior lives because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know he Hope tomorrow, and life is worth the living just because he lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride. And joy he brings, but greater still, the calm assurance this child can face a uncertain days because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds tomorrow. And life is worth the living just because he lives. And then one day... I'll cross the river, I'll fight last fight, no war with pain. <coughs> and then as, as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory, and I'll know he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds to future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. And life is worth the living just because he lives. And this next song, you go, oh, oh, that was song, that song was written. I didn't believe it, but it was written, actually written by Bill and Gloria Gaither in 1960. No, in 1970, I thought it'd be back in the 60s or before, or even 40s or something. But it was written by Bill and Gloria Gaither in 1970, 1970, one year after 1969. And because they were going through some heavy trials in their life, they were going through some real problems, and they wrote that song. He, uh, Bill and Gloria together wrote that song in 1970. Mm -mm -mm. And, and so I thought it went back further than that. But I'm thinking about uh, he, he Arose and He Lives. The song called Just He Lives and He Arose. But this one is Because He Lives, written by Bill and Gloria Gaither. Oh, yes. And uh, so, and this last song, this next song here is called Glory to His Name, you know. And we're celebrating the blood of Christ, the blood of Jesus, and all these songs. Uh, this one is uh, Glory to His Name. 
Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name, there to my heart was the blood applied glory to his name glory to his name glory to his name there to my heart was the blood applied glory to his name I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. O oh, precious fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad that I entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to his name name glory to his name there to my heart was the blood applied glory to his name there to my heart was the blood applied glory to his name glory to his name Glory to his name, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name, glory to, glory to the name of Jesus. And there to my heart was the blood applied, uh, gl glory to uh, the name of Jesus. Written by Elisha A. Hoffman. H-O-F-F-M-A-N. Elisha A. Hoffman in 1878. And uh, John Stockton. S-T-O-C-K-T-O-N. Just like Stockton, California. John Stockton set the music to it. Uh, and uh, it's Elisha was reading Elisha Hoffman was reading about Calvary when he wrote that song he was reading in the Bible about the stories about Calvary and that was what uh, uh, inspired him to write that song so uh, anyway so uh Beautiful songs, and then and so uh, 
we will, uh, this first song that we sang was, uh, was a new song to me before today or before, yeah, I guess yesterday. And it was called, Oh, What a Price. And it says, God made the universe and the stars up in the sky. You know, describing, you know, everything, you know, like that song, how great they are, all the wonderful things that God made, you know, the, the uh, you know, whole universe with the stars in the sky and the beautiful mountains and trees and everything. He made all those things, he said. And when he made them, he made all of this beautiful for just you and I. Just you and me, just you and I. He made it all for all of us to see. He gave us a light, you know, the light of truth and the light of the sun and everything to brighten up our way. And, uh, and he gave us his only son. Do you know him today? Do you know Jesus today? So God gave us all those things. He gave us everything, all that beauty of the of nature and all of that and everything. And then he also gave us his son so that we could receive the, the light of his love and everything to make us uh, be able to enjoy all those beautiful things. You know, some people are living so in darkness that they can't enjoy anything except the lights at night, you know, of the uh, clubs and everything. They can't enjoy the brightness of that. They can't enjoy nature and everything. They're so dark. They've been so in darkness, but he gave us his only son to bright, so that we, our life would be brightened up where we could enjoy all the beautiful things that he created. Actually enjoy them. And so that's such a wonderful thing to remind ourselves of is that we can enjoy all those things because we because we have been born again through the blood of Jesus and understand what he, all he has done for us and who God is that gave, gave us all these things. Woo. He sent his only son to die on Calvary's tree because it took Jesus' blood that we might be free, free from sin. He knew we were lost, so he paid the cost. <laughs> and I like to never figure out what he was saying there about uh, it, uh, where it says uh, he knew we were lost. I finally caught that, but I thought it sounded like at first I said he, uh, at first I couldn't understand it, so I had just written down it took a lot of love, so he paid the cost. But he was actually saying, you know, I was across the house and had it on there uh, right there at the last one time to go back over it real quick. And I, and I heard it and I said, oh, he's saying, he knew we were lost, so he paid the cost. You know, started start, some of these songs you have to put them down and uh, leave blank spaces, and it's like uh, the wheel of fortune or something, <laughs> or, or or some kind of jigsaw it's all puzzle. You know, you you know that it's going to rhyme, and so you let the rhythm tell you, and then you start listening. Well, what rhymes with cost? Oh, he's saying he knew we were lost, so he paid. So he paid the cost. <laughs> uh, but oh what a price but, but oh what a price that cost was oh what a price for a sinner like me you know and this was the main thing they were emphasizing this song that's the reason why they weren't necessarily making any of the, the rest of it kind of going through it wasn't really making it clear because then uh, they uh, were emphasizing the part about oh what a price for a sinner like me that was the part they were really emphasizing. That was all real plain. He'll take all your fears away and replace it with love. That was clear. And assure you eternal life in heaven above. No mistake in that. Uh, he made all this possible uh, with the blood that, you know, was shed or the blood from his hands, whichever they were saying, or the blood from his hands or the blood from the stand. Uh, he made all this possible with the blood that was shed from the pure side of Jesus to the nails in his either feet or hands. Uh, and then, yes, he gave his only son 
to die on Calvary's tree. That was plain. It took Jesus' blood that we would be free. Uh, it took a lot of love, but he paid the price. But oh, what a price for a sinner like me. Yes, oh, what a price for a sinner like me. Singing Letter Betters, 1970s, the late 1960s, early 1970s, in there, in there uh, where they were singing, you know, that was the time they were singing. And so, you know, all you do, as I said, all you do is you put in those four words, oh, what a price. No quotation marks or anything, you just put, oh, what a price, uh, singing lead betters. But you have to put that singing lead betters after it, or you'll never find it. It goes to all this stuff about what a price I paid for, you know, for, for your love, and oh, I paid an awful price for loving you, and all the other kind of crazy things. And so, but uh, singing, uh, oh, what a price, uh, hyphen singing lead betters. And you don't have to put the date or anything else in, just those, wor just those words. And the next song was. The blood will never lose its power. And I put that in there next because of what this song was saying about the blood, you know, Jesus' blood that uh, paid the cost for our sins, you know, his pure side of Jesus to the nails in his hands or feet. And that, and then I, uh, so then I said, well, you know, that flows right into the blood Jesus shed for me. Way back on Calvary, the blood that Jesus shed for me. Way back on Calvary, that's a little closer. <laughs> Way back on Calvary, the blood that gives me strength. From day to day, it shall never lose his power. It soothes my doubts and comes all my fears. <laughs> so I better quit while I'm ahead. He said, uh, but he said, the blood that gives me strength from day to day, from day to day, it will never lose its power. That's the important part of the whole thing, is that the blood will never lose the power to save people from sin. It will never lose that power. Never, never, never. It, it, uh, so, and it the power to soothe our doubts and calm our fears and dry all of our tears will never lose the power to do that. The blood that gives me strength never lose the power to give me strength. From day to day, it will never lose its power. For it reaches to, or also it reaches, for or it reaches to the highest mountains and it flows to the lowest valleys. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. If I practice that a while, I could really get that down good. I had to spend so much time on that first one, though. I didn't have time. It will never lose its power. Uh, 19... 62, Andre Crouch. Whoa. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> if I ever, if I ever <laughs> get to the point where I'm teaching singing, of course, I'm singing in a Bible college or something. <laughs> I'm the instructor. Make sure you sing your words clearly, especially when you come down to the end where you're making them rhyme and everything. Make sure you Make that clear, you know, don't just, so many of them come to that, they sing a little bit and they'll come to the end of the line and then they'll, I guess they're trying to get to the next line or something and they'll just blur that last word there, that last couple of words, you know, just blur it, you know, real, you know, and uh, so that you, 
it's hard to make out. Uh, but uh, try to enunciate the words clearly, even though you know you're trying to you know want to get the 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 keys and everything right in the and the song and the music and everything. So you're working hard on that too, and and you're doing a great job of that. But try to. Uh, Open your mouth and sing out those words so that when people hear it, they'll understand the message of it. Not just enjoy the music, but understand the message of it also. And so that's part of the reason why I'm going over these songs like I am. And not only singing them and trying to sing them as clear, but also then afterwards I'm reading the words of it. To make sure that people do understand the message of the song, which I consider the most important thing, you know. It's nice to get a little toe tapping going on with the rhythm of the song, but you need to also understand the message of the song. And, uh, you know, every once in a great while, some song leader will read the words before they sing. But most of the time, when they're singing, the song leader is leading a song. He doesn't read the, they don't, he or she does not read the words of it before they sing it. And so, uh, and then these professional singers, you know, a lot of times they'll just slur the words. You know, they love the music and they've learned the music and they can really play and they know they're musicians. And so they can really get those notes down and everything. But their enunciation is not always what it should be. But then uh, this next song was called. Uh, this last song was. No, we've got what do we got? Two more songs. This next song was called Because He lives you know and uh, uh that was actually sung after that uh on the on one of those it was sung after the uh the blood will never lose its power they sung the chorus of this song which what made me think of it they went from the blood will never lose its power into because he lives i can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know all oh, he holds a future and life is worth the living must because he lives. And I thought that was a nice touch. But it's but this because he lives uh, is uh, because he lives says God sent his son. They call him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, oh, oh, he holds the future. And life is worth a living because I know he lives. Because he lives. You know, and that's what uh, Bill and Gloria Gaither were. They see they was out going through all those trials and pressure and everything at the time in the early 19 there in 1970 1970 uh, and uh, so they were but they were thinking about the fact that we know that we can face the future we can go ahead and face the future and get over these trials and problems because we know that he, because he lives uh, we can because I know I can face the future what does it say. Uh, because he lives, I can face the future, or I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, oh, oh, he holds the future, and life is worth the living. Because he lives, he how sweet to hold a newborn baby. And I, they, they may have been thinking about that. They may have been, they may have been a, a newborn grandchild or something, and maybe there were problems or something. But or maybe uh, 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 it could have been their child. But or their grandchild or whatever it was, and they say so. How sweet to hold a newborn baby, and feel the pride and joy he brings. But greater still, the calm assurance that this child, you know, we hold here, can face uncertain days because he lives. See, they were facing some uncertain days for some reason or another, and uh, maybe financially or whatever it was. Uh, but they uh, they knew they could face it with calm assurance because. He lives. And uh, then uh, one day, I'm, uh, I'll cross the river. I'll fight life's fight on war with pain. And, you know, could they could have been going through some pain. Fight life's fight on war with pain. And then 
as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory, then I'll know he lives. And uh, there was another song. Okay, so we sang, let's see, we sang, we sang, uh, oh, what a price, then we sang the blood that uh, will never lose its power, and then he lives, because he lives, and I have totally lost the other one, I don't even know. I'll have to wait till I play it through to find out what that last song I sung was. Oh, I know. I think I know what it was. It was a. Uh, it was, well. I, uh, if your life is granted with, let me see. It was. Uh, it was something about victory and Je victory and Jesus. Uh, and the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. Oh, okay, so it's not in that one. Well, it has to be here in one of these two. Glory to his name. That was the last one was glory to his name. Down at the cross where my Savior died. <laughs> Down where for cleansing from sin I cried. Glad I didn't forget this one. This was a wonderful song. Uh, and it's the same, applies to that same, the blood that was shed for me and everything. The same theme about the blood. And so it is about time for us to go into our Bible study. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart, just like the other song said, there to my heart was the blood applied. Oh, okay, I did already or go through that one, didn't I? The, or there to my heart was the blood applied. No, the, I sung it. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name, glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within Jesus Jesus so sweetly abides within there at the cross where he took me in glory to his name glory to his name there to my heart was the blood applied glory to his name come to this fountain so rich and sweet Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. O oh, precious fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Written by uh, Elisha A. Hoffman in 1878. Music put to it by John Stockton. Uh, and so he was reading about Calvary and everything. And, uh, you know, I better not go into that one. I can preach a whole three-hour sermon on that one. But everybody, I think the, the words of that as they sing it and everything are all real plain. And everybody can understand the words of that. And they pretty well much understand the message already of that one. But, uh, yeah, I better not get started on it. I can really, really go to town on a message, a three-hour message on that song. But we will go into our Bible study. 
And we'll study some more about Jesus in our Bible study because it is now about 45 minutes when we always go around between 45 and 47 minutes to our Bible study. I have to discipline myself to do that. Otherwise, I'll just talk and I'll find it's an hour or two later and I won't even have time for the Bible study. So, but the Bible study, we had just finished the book of Mark and we were down to, we had read those last six verses and didn't have time to comment on them. So I'm going to comment on those. And then, we're, and then we will be starting the book of Luke. And we'll be talking about Jesus and his birth and everything. Oh, yes. Yeah, so and that Jesus that shed his blood for us. And so, uh, but this is our Bible study, our, uh, our uh, New Testament exposition, where we're going through the entire book of uh, the New Testament, ever how slow we have to do, we're going to plow, we may be plowing slow, but we're, we're going to plow low and we're going to plow deep. As much as the Lord is, uh, gives us the, the anointing to do so, we're going to really plow into it. But we, and we're going to keep on plowing ever, ever how slowly it is. We're going to plow on, we're going to plod on and plow on until we reach that gate, that gate <laughs> in our plowing, the gate of the field or the gate of heaven, <laughs> whichever comes first. <laughs> <laughs> While we're plowing our fields, we'll be plowing through the New Testament. We can be listening to these messages while we're plowing, you know, in our tractor or whatever. <laughs> and so, uh, but uh, here we are in the verses number, uh, uh, verses, uh, uh, the last six verses of Mark chapter 16, one of my favorite chapters. And so, uh, it says, and they uh, went and and uh, told it to the uh, rest of the neither believe, believe them. They they went and told it to the uh, residue or the ones that were left that were, hadn't heard. Uh, you see, this is talking about after he appeared. After the resurrection, from uh, uh, unto two of them, as uh, they uh, walked and went into the country, and they went and told it unto the residue, the, or the rest, neither be uh, neither believed they them, but they didn't believe them. It said, uh, afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not uh, them uh, which had seen him after he was risen, you know, because they didn't believe the witnesses of the people that said they saw him. And they said, we don't believe you. But then Jesus goes himself and he said, and then he, up, uh, he then he, uh, uh, he uh, upbraids them. He uh, sort of chastises them, sort of gives them some, uh, words of instruction, as it were, some words of suggestion that you should have believed them and uh, upbraids them. And he said unto to them, go ye unto all the world Woo! and and uh, and preach the gospel to every creature. You know, he was going to give them that power. And so you're going to have such power. You know, because I'm going to send the Holy Ghost to be another comforter. You're going to have such power that you can go into the, all the world. No matter how difficult it is or what religions they have there and everything. You know, how difficult it may be to get them to accept Jesus. You'll have the power to get them to accept Christ. And, you know, some of them in all the countries will accept Christ. Go ye into all the world preaching the gospel to every creature. You know. And, uh, <laughs> well, you know, I guess if you, I guess that's supposed to cover where the uh, young preacher starts out preaching to the cows and the horses. And you go out and preach to every creature <laughs> and, 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 learn, and learn how to scream it out loudly <laughs> and pound on the stumps or whatever until you get it down good and then go and preach to all the human creatures. <laughs> scream until you, you scream so loud that you chase away the cat. Everybody, everything. Oh, 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 you know, 
exercise that voice. I should have exercised my singing voice more. <laughs> what I should have exercised. <laughs> so he said, uh, and uh, so, uh, but that would have chased the cows and the horses away. <laughs> and so he says, uh, to every creature, he uh, that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And uh, and there upon uh, there these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, you know, see, it says if they do. It doesn't say you tempt God by doing it. It just says if they drink any deadly thing. Uh, happen to happen to accidentally, you know, come across something, and, or accidentally get it in the water or something. If they accidentally drink some deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, and they shall uh, lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. You know, uh, so you know it says uh, they will go about as they go about preaching the gospel into all the world. You know, and. The gospel was not preached into all the world until rather recently, the past few decades, you know, it was, uh, uh, had not. And so, you know, until they had preached the gospel to all the world, at least you'd have to give it at that, that they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. That was the signs that would follow until they had reached the world and everything. And then, of course, at that point, well, Jesus would come back, you know, and, and so then, um, uh, you know, that, that covers the entire period that they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You know, or when they lay on, hands on the sick and pray uh, fervently in the right manner in the name of Jesus and in a court, one accord and all like that, those sick shall recover. You know, so he's promising that if you pray right, you know, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man that prays right, if you pray right, that they will recover. And so that, that's a, marvel, a marvelous, a, a very marvelous truth that we should not let go of. You know, why anybody would want to let go of a wonderful thing like that? I never know. And so it says that then, uh, it says, okay, and it says, uh, uh, so that they, uh, when the Lord had spoken, well, where is that about? Well, it was, I don't see that part about, oh, oh, that's right at the beginning. They shall take up serpents and it shall, if they drink any deadly thing. Okay, so, uh, w but uh, whatever whatever is meant by taking up serpents, I would take it to mean that it was just, uh, you know, if you found that, except in that position where, you know, uh, a serpent had fallen down on the tree on you or something like that. You know, most of those are not poisonous, as I say, not in this country. And, and uh, those that are poisonous are usually under a rock or something like that. And, and God can give you the wisdom to know how not to, you know, wh where that they could, that where there will be the kind of places they'll be and to avoid that. But if you happen to, ha uh, uh, you know, end up with one, you know, uh, that just falls down on you or you come across it very quickly, you know, uh, uh, everything he said <clears throat> they shall take up that serpent you know you shall be able to just pitch it off without uh, without harm <clears throat> and so one way or the other the angel will of god will protect you against it or you will throw it off or however you know is meant by that it doesn't mean certainly does not mean that you will go out and hunt down snakes to you know uh, to carry into the church meetings but, you know, as I say, you don't criticize other people's faith and other people's religions. And so those that feel like they are able to do that, you know, and want to do that, and it's in their own particular church, well, we don't criticize that. You know, if, if it's in their own particular church that has that in their doctrinal statement, well, that's fine. You know, like some of the churches in West Virginia and all have and that. It's in, it's in their statement, and you know that before you go in. And everything you are, you should, well, I guess you know, but if you don't, as soon as you see it, you have a right to, you know, you can always choose in wisdom to leave or whatever. But uh, it's in their doctrine, it's in their statement of the, what they believe. And so we're not going to criticize them. And, uh, but uh, that's what I take it to mean is, oh, that, 
you know, you don't take it into the church, but you wait until you come across it, and God will protect you from the snakes like he does the poison that is accidentally drunk. And so then, but, but this is all a, a very wonderful, and uh, so it says, and so, uh, and so, the, uh, so then, uh, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he uh, was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. You know, so everywhere they went, the Lord was working with them and confirming. Everywhere they went, he was confirming them with, uh, with signs following. And that's what he will do everywhere that the missionaries go and everywhere that we go into all the world and everything. He's going to confirm that with those signs that people will be healed and so forth. You know, uh, if we're staying in the tune with him and receiving the power and uh, and reaching up and receiving the power, you know, he has to give us it all. And so we will go on into um, Luke chapter 1. We're going to start Luke chapter 1. Let's see where. And so. Uh, we'll have plenty of time left now for Luke chat for the book of Luke, and uh, we should be able to get a chapter or two of that. And, uh, and uh, that is a wonderful book. Oh, uh, yes, uh, and uh, uh, written as they always say, and I'll throw it in there because all the teachers and professors always say it. It was written by a Dr. Luke. He was a was a physician. And so, so Dr. Luke, if you, if that, yeah, but uh, all of them are inspired. So all of the Gospels are inspired. But chapter one, for as much as many have uh, taken in hand to set forth in the uh, order a Declaration of these things, uh, which were, which are uh, most uh, surely believed among us. I didn't remember that verse. Uh, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word it seemed good to me also having had perfect understanding perfect understanding of all things from the way uh, very first uh, to uh, understanding of all things from the very first to write uh, unto thee in order most, uh, you know, most uh, excellent Theophilus, <laughs> that thou mightest know the uh, certainty of these things whereupon thou hast been instructed. So Theophilus, he was a instructed about these things from others and everything that maybe were not eyewitnesses. And so he's writing them to know that, yes, I was there and I witnessed all of these things. So all these things in this book of Luke, he witnessed in first hand. And uh, it was not just some apocrypha or something that was written by somebody after that did not actually witness, you know, or something later on, you know, that they thought would sound good. But it was written, the book of Luke was written by an eyewitness of all the things that happen. And so that's, it makes it very, very significant. You know, now, uh, uh, he uh, was a witness from the point that, now I, I know how that's supposed to be, uh, well, he was a witness of, of all the miracles and all the different things that happened after he was called uh, as a uh, as a, a disciple and became a uh, a, 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 uh, a disciple of Jesus, and so then um, it says there uh, was in the days of Herod 
the king of of uh, Judea, a certain priest named uh, Zephaniah, of the course of Abiratus, of the <coughs> And his wife, uh, our, um, out of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Her name was Elizabeth, and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and. Uh, and ordinances of the Lord uh, blameless. They were walking blameless. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren. And they both were, uh, were never well, now well stricken in years. They were gotten, gotten on up in age. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest the priest office you know he okay so I guess it, that was Zachariah uh, was in the priest uh, office of the priest office be uh, for God in the order of his course according to the According to the question custom of the day of the priest office, his lot was to uh, burn incense, which he when he went into the temple of the Lord. So that was his job, and um, so um, and the whole multitude of the people were the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense you know they were outside praying and they were putting in with inside they were you know putting in the incense and there appeared unto uh, to him uh, uh, a uh, an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense, and when uh, Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. Woo! <clears throat> mm. But the angel said unto him. Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear a, a son, and they shall call him his name John. You see, so okay, so then she was barren, and they were uh, couldn't bear a child, and they got on up in the years, were past the childbearing years, well past it, and all of that, but. He was praying, and they were praying to have a child. Of course, God I, was waiting till the right time when John the Baptist would, you know, be the forerunner of Jesus. And so he, uh, he even sends the angel, woo, sends an angel down to tell him that we are going to grant your prayer, and you are going to have a child, and name him John. He's going to be John the Baptist, you know. You know, not just John the Baptist, you know, <laughs> uh, the Baptist preacher John, <laughs> but uh, but John the Anointed to be the forerunner of Jesus. <laughs> and of course, some people say, "Well, God always sends a Baptist preacher to to, to uh, uh, tell you <laughs> Jesus is uh, how to find Jesus." <laughs> Uh, but uh, anyway, so uh, uh, that, uh, you know, uh, at, at one time they were soul winners. 
<laughs> and so, anyway, uh, but, uh, so then, uh, he said, <laughs> and, uh, Zacharias, he said, so anyway, the angel come to him. And he said, uh, thou shalt, and he said, they tell him what, what name to call him. Call him, his name, call him John, and thou shalt have, uh, joy and gladness and many shall rejoice at his birth for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb and uh, many of the disciples of uh, of uh, many of the disciples of Israel said he turns uh, into the Lord and their God. You know, he uh, calls many of the children of Israel to turn into the Lord of their God, or he will do that. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn their hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know that this? For I am an old man, and my wife is uh, well stricken with years. And the angel answered and said unto him, I am, ooh, says, I am Gabriel that stand, uh, that, that stands in the presence of God. Mm, mm, mm. These good Gabriel that's always been standing in the presence of God. Woo! Oh, my, 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 my. Ooh, that's marvelous. I didn't remember it being Gabriel, and I didn't remember it being standing in the presence of the Lord and so on like that, but, you know, I wondered if Zacharias thought it first, or, or they thought it first once they got to where they could believe it. And then when Gabriel and everything was up, they thought, well, that John was going to be the Messiah and everything. But then, of course, it got clarified and everything that he was to be to be uh, the forerunner of Jesus. You know, a very uh, very chosen position, uh, an anointed position, a marvelous position, much to be honored, and everything. And so. He was the forerunner, John the Baptist, and so uh, how marvelous all that is. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, yes, and so I guess we skip over to the birth of Jesus many times and, and forget to read the first introduction there to the book of Luke, and so we miss those wonderful things. And that was a wonderful thing, you know. So something that we should behold with all that Gabriel came down and appeared to check Zacharias and told him that he, that John the Baptist would be born and would be the forerunner of Jesus Christ. Woo! And so, says so, so, and uh, I okay, I was always standing in the presence of Jesus. I uh, always standing in the presence of God, but I was sent. Now I am sent to. Speak unto thee and to show thee those these glad tidings. And behold, see, there's another behold. Behold with all. Behold, thou shalt be dumb. You know, uh, speech impaired, uh, mute. Shall be mute and uh, not be able to speak and not be able to speak uh, until the day that these things shall be uh, performed because thou believest not my words, uh, which shall be uh, fulfilled in their season. I thought, it, I thought he was going to say so that he wouldn't, you know, go out and tell everybody that he saw an angel or something and they think he's crazy or something. Uh, are they, you know, uh, they didn't want that to be told at that point or whatever. But he said, because you believe not when I told you that these things were going to happen, then you're going to be stricken dumb, uh, you know, stricken uh, without being able to speak until the, these things will be fulfilled. And 
and all and uh, and so uh, anyway it says that that's what he, they did uh, and so uh, the, uh, the people the people with uh, waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple and when he came uh, out he could not speak with them and he was probably trying to figure out why he couldn't speak and everything before he came out and he came out and could not speak and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple for he uh, he beckoned unto them and remained speechless you know started <laughs> speaking in signs or whatever you know and it came to pass that as uh, soon as the days of his ministry were accomplished, he uh, departed to his own house. And after these days, his wife, Elizabeth, conceived and hid her five months, hid herself for five months saying thou hast the lord thus has the lord dealt with me in the days whereupon he uh looked on me to take away my uh reproach among men and uh, in the sixth month the angel gabriel was sent from god unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth <laughs> to a virgin oh so he was the one that appeared then to, to Mary to a virgin a spouse to a man huh no the this I did not remember that to you to a I knew an angel came to her to a, a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. I didn't remember I didn't remember them giving that many details about that. I guess I mostly just read it in maybe Matthew or something and then went to Luke maybe for the you know the time when Jesus was uh, actually in the manger or whatever like that. But I didn't remember it actually giving that many details that actually Gabriel was in the presence of God facing God all the time and then he was sent by God came down and he was the one then he came down from God directly from God with that mission and was sent to uh, speak with Mary and, and he tell her that she was to be with that, uh, that that child which she was to bear was going to be named Jesus Emmanuel God with us and all that and so what a wonderful wonderful thing and so then he goes down and so what does Gabriel do? He said, that makes for an interesting but saying. Um, so he comes down uh, from God and to a virgin expoused to a man named Joseph and of the uh, house of David and the virgin's name was Mary and the angel appeared and uh, came to unto her and said, Hail thou that uh, art highly favored the Lord is with thee uh, blessed art thou <coughs> among women and when she was when she saw him she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of uh, manner of Exert salutation this should be and the angel said unto her fear not Mary for thou uh, hast found favor with God mm -mm. found great favor with God you know because of her purity and so forth like that you know and uh, remaining that way you know until such time which you know being espoused to Joe or being engaged to Joseph, but not, you know, yet married and so forth, and uh, remaining pure and remaining a virgin and all like that, you know. And so he says, um, 
you know, you will remain that way, but you will have that this child by the Holy Ghost, you know, and the Holy Ghost will uh, will uh, it will be a child of the Holy Ghost and so on. And so uh, that that's a, well, that, that's a wonderful thing to think about, you know. And so it says, uh, "And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and." And uh, bring, bring, bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. J e s u s. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever okay and of his kingdom there shall be no end then said Mary unto the angel how shall this be seeing I know not a man you'll see I'm still averted and you know, how, how can this be and the angel appeared and the angel answered and said unto her the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and woo, and the power of the high shall overshadow thee therefore also that baby also therefore that holy thing it says <laughs> holy therefore also that holy thing which <laughs> shall be uh, born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I don't know why they refer it as a holy thing, but, uh, and behold thy uh, cousin Elizabeth, uh, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called who was uh, called barren people call her barren for with God nothing shall be impossible yeah. God decided to do that See, he done did two things two miracles there two unusual things two wonderful blessings and things there because both John the forerunner of Jesus and Jesus himself both he had to perform a, he performed a miracle upon a barren womb to have John be born. And then he performed a miracle upon, upon uh, Mary, who was a virgin, you know, and, uh, and, by, and conceived, conceived Jesus by the power of his, you know, his own creative power of the Holy Ghost and everything, created Jesus in her womb, having known not a man, having been a virgin. Those two miracles both, in order to bring both John the Baptist and Jesus to bear to, uh, together at the right time. And so, it, it's definitely a, a, a uh, miracles of God of every sort and every type of thing. And uh, so it's all glorious, both both of those two things, you know, when you add both of those two together. Oh, man, man, man it makes for a marvelous, marvelous, uh, marvelous thing. And so, uh, and so uh, he said that she'll have, he shall be called the, uh, so, uh, and Mary said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord, <laughs> uh, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. She said, she said, well, I accept that, you know. And behold, the man had made the Lord. And, and the angel departed from her. And Mary uh, rose in those days. And went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah. And entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted 
Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And so, you know, <laughs> John was already witnessing to it, and, and she uh, spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, and whence is this to me? Whence is this to me? Oh, yeah, it really gets better and better, doesn't it? So which is this to me? Uh, well, the mother. Uh, which is this to me that the uh, mother of my Lord? See, they already knew the mother of my Lord should come to me. Woo. For lo, as soon as the voice, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded to in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Woo! And blessed is the is she that believed for there shall be a a uh, for performance of these things which were told her from the Lord and Mary said my soul doth magnify the Lord mm. and my Spirit hath uh, rejoiced in God my Savior. Mm -mm -mm. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. But for he, for behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me Blessed. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, so, you know, that's uh, for he that is mighty hath done to me great things and, and uh, holy is his name. So it said, it said, all generations will remember her and call her blessed. Because of that, because God had cho chose her in her lowest state and everything, and uh, and in the uh, purity of her heart and everything, he had, had uh, Jesus, the Savior of the world, to be born. Oh, yes. And so that's marvelous to think about. Mm -mm -mm. And so I have not remembered all the details of all this. And so... Uh, and uh, and his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their uh, seats and uh, exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the mighty with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away. For he hath Helping his servant, for he hath helped his servant 
Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. And Mary abode with her about three months and and uh, returned to her own house. So she stayed there three months and then returned to her own house. Uh, hmm. Okay. Now Elizabeth's full uh, time came that she should be delivered and she uh, brought forth a son and her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had uh, showed great mercy upon her and they rejoiced with her. And so then uh, that was a uh, boy that is and uh, and it came to pass that on the eighth day they came in uh, they came to circumcise the child and they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. Okay. Uh, and they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to his father and how he would have him called. And he, uh, okay, so yeah, so that's what it was. I was wondering about that Zacharias. He was going to name him after Zacharias, but, uh, you know, uh, but uh, they, uh, Ask, then ask Zacharias, the, the man, the priest, the older one. They ask him, well, you know, is this okay? We can call him Zacharias. What name would you have him called? And so then Zacharias was then able, you know, they, they, they did it by sign language, you know, ask him by sign language, what do you want this child to be called? And so then Zacharias was able to relate that what the angel had told him that his name was to be called John. And so that's how he ended up being called John instead of Zacharias. So he said, um, and they, uh, and his uh, mother answered and said, not so, but he shall be called John. And wait a minute. I missed something here. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to the circumcised uh, the child and they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. And his mother answered, oh, his mother's the one. His mother, well, let's see. Okay, so his mother you see, the angel, I guess, did the angel appear both to Zacharias and to his mother and told his mother, John, and his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. And they said unto him, There is none of thy kindred that is called by that this name. Oh, you want to name it after one of your kin, but there's none of them called by this name. And so then they made signs to the father how he would have him call, and he call, asked for a writing ta uh, ta table, or tablet, or whatever, and a writing table, and wrote, saying, his name is John, and they, they all marveled. And uh, his uh, mouth was opened at that point immediately, and his tongue uh, loosed, and he spake, and praised God. And so, whenever he confirmed that it was to be called John, then his, uh, he was to be called John, then his mouth was loosened to where he could speak. 
And no doubt then he said it out loud, John, his name's going to be called John. And so, and uh, his mouth was open. And so, and fear came on all that dwelt round about them, and all those these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea, and all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him, and his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, uh, and, and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. And he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Yeah, see, he's been there since the world began. He spake by the by the mouth of his holy prophets, uh, which have been since the, ever since the world began. He was speaking through the prophets that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us to per, to perform the mercy promised. To perform the, the mercy the mercy promise. So the prophets, you know, said, you know, God would always perform his uh, keep that promise and perform the mercy he, he promised. And that had been spoken and that had been told by and predicted uh, of these events ever since the foundation of the world. And so, you know, the uh, all of those uh, Pharisees and Sadducees that they should have been prepared for it. Uh, knowing that it had been spoken since the beginning of the world and everything. And so then it says, um, okay, and so uh, as he has promised to our fathers and to uh, remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our Father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear. We might serve him without fear. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou child shall be called the prophet of the highest for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the re mission of their sins through the uh, tender mercy of God whereby the day spring from on high has uh, visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our Feet unto the way of peace. Woo! And uh, the child grew and walked strong in spirit and was in the desert till the day of his showing unto Israel. Stayed in the, stayed in the desert praying and all, uh, preparing himself unto the day that he was to be come into Israel and, and, and be the forerunner of Jesus. And so, you know, that's 80 verses in that first chapter, but it goes into all that detail that 
about all of this that the other Gospels don't go into. So it's a very necessary chapter uh, in the Bible. It goes into all these details like that that the other books of the Bible do not go into. Or the other Gospels don't go into. Uh, they don't go into, they go into, so that's a, it's marvelous to have all these details about it all, and uh, I had always been thinking in my mind, well, there's not very many details there, and so chapter 2 says, and it came to pass in those days that there uh, went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that you know, this is where we usually start. <laughs> yeah. And so, I remember this well. Went out into a, uh, it went out a decree from Caesar Augusta that all the world should be taxed. And this uh, taxing was uh, from uh, first made when, uh, when Cyrenius uh, was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the uh, city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they, uh, while they were there, the days uh, were accomplished that she should be, uh, you know, delivered. Uh, that, uh, you know, baby should be delivered. And, and she uh, brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him to in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them. Woo! And they were sore afraid. And here's another one of these beholds that you look upon it with great amazement and great awesomeness. Uh, and, uh, and behold it very carefully and with a lot of awe. Uh, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. All right, you know, and we're coming rapidly upon Christmas now. And everything, and uh, I'll be singing that song uh, about uh, oh, uh, little town of Bethlehem, and s starting to sing it today. But I'll be singing that song, and I'll be singing uh, the other Christmas songs and everything about Jesus and the baby Jesus and everything, and the way in the manger, and all. We'll be singing all those songs. But this is very glorious to realize that he appeared. You know, uh, he appeared to. Uh, Zacharias about uh, uh, and to Elizabeth about John. And he appeared to Mary. The angel appeared to Mary and told her that she was going to be with the child of the Holy Ghost. And then he appeared later to Joseph when he told Joseph to take the uh, child because uh, you know of what Herod was going to do about killing all those the young one under two years old uh, sons the male child two years old and under and to take him and flee into Egypt. And then now he's appearing to the shepherds, telling them that uh, now that uh, uh, you uh, behold, there sh you shall have there should be a, a uh, son which will be called Jesus, uh, and uh, be a, which will be a savior of his people. And all he came to the shepherds and told them about it. And so these angels had a, a big part in all of this, you know. And uh, 
and then they keep continue to have a part in it uh you know hark the herald angels sing that song like that and everything and so it, it it's becoming a very glorious thing that the lord is doing here and so then he said they came to those shepherds fear not behold i uh, bring you good tidings of great joy and far unto you is born this day in the city of david a a, a savior which is christ the lord and and this shall be a sign unto you ye shall find in find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes laying in a manger so that angel told him and said you'll know that's him because he'll be laying in a manger you know he'll be in those swaddling clothes but that but it, but jesus and the swaddling clothes and all will be uh red laying in a manger that usually you know is meant for the feed the cows in uh be usually be uh but upon that straw upon that hay and everything uh will be he will be laying upon that wrapped in swaddling clothes and suddenly they uh was uh with the angels a there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly host praising god and saying glory to god in the highest and on earth peace goodwill unto men and it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven the shepherds and the shepherds and said one to the other let us now go even unto bethlehem and we uh, see this thing which is come to pass which the lord hath made known unto us you know they said well you know they said let's 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 start let's head now for bethlehem and see and if we can find uh, you know and, and the, this a child laying in a manger wrapped in swelling clothes and uh, and confirm that this is the uh a man, this is our savior and all we will go and we'll check all this out that we've been told by these angels and i'm sure they did you know if, they, if it was an angel who appeared to them and told them that this was to be the case i'm sure they they headed there uh, immediately you know and, and, and uh, so would anybody and so uh yeah so they headed there immediately to find out and check that out and uh that's a good I, I love all these details which Luke is putting in here, you know, to explain it. That's the reason why oftentimes we read, we always read Luke, you know, uh, chapter two when it comes to, you know, Christmas uh, sermons and everything. And and, uh, and when we're describing what happened on Christmas Day and everything, we, we uh, read this Luke chapter two. It gives all these details, you know, about where the angels appeared and who they appeared to and all these kinds of things and it's so it's a very glorious thing and um, then uh it came uh, and so then they said this is how you'll know and so they headed out and they even they, they even after those and angels had told me said it was a whole host of angels came after that uh and uh, was praising god you know and uh Oh, it says a, a multitude that you know that's like thousands of the heavenly host praising god and saying glory to god in the highest and on earth peace goodwill to men and it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven the shepherd said let's go see this thing and they came with haste yeah i knew it was gonna go <laughs> yeah, we're going with haste and found mary and joseph and the babe lying in a manger and when they had seen it they made known uh they made it known abroad uh the saying which was told them concerning this child they went about telling people that the angels had appeared to them and told them, you know, this was going to be the Savior, you know. And so it was announced both by those angels and then again by John, the Baptist and everything, preparing the way and everything. So it was a, a lots of announcements of Jesus being the Savior and everything. And yet uh, the hardness of the hearts of uh, many of the Jews and of the high priest and the, and the scribes and Pharisees and all were, were to still not understand that that was the that jesus was the savior of the world you know and so it um 
it is, it is a mystery in a way in which uh, how that they how that they missed it other than just it has to be explained by the hardness of their hearts you know they just and caught up in their own little thing you know that they were doing and and then forgetting to what the prophets had said and and so forth and and just in their condition of their hardness of their hearts they were unable to understand that that was the Messiah and so um, and he says uh, uh, let's see on this next page uh, and all they that heard it wondered at these things which were told him by these shepherds uh, but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart and the shepherds uh, returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was said unto them and, and, uh, and when eight days uh, were accomplished for the circumcision of the child his name was called Jesus and which was a uh, so named of the angel before he was uh, before he was uh, uh, conceived in the womb. And so we'll have to stop now and pray. And this has been glorious. I can't wait to get back to it on the next time. And uh, we'll stop there the you know, at the, right there at the verse. Uh, see, we stopped right there at verse uh, 20, uh, 22 of the second chapter. So it's two, two, two. 222, 222. Uh, and uh, we will stop and pray now. And this is we're stopping right now, like we usually do at 47. And we're going to pray. Oh, Father, in the name of thy Holy Son, Jesus. Thank you, dear God, for the for sending thy, uh, thy son, Jesus, to, to uh, live and teach and then die on the, for us. And, and, uh, Father, out of the love that he showed and the blood that was shed and everything, that we might be saved and from our sins and for our unbelief, from our unbelief and all, and raised was risen the third day for our justification and everything, all for our salvation. Oh, Father, uh, died for our justification, risen for our, our salvation and everything, a demonstration of our salvation. And Lord, Father, we just thank you, dear. Oh, dear Father, now, for this glorious story and for the details of it, and we pray that you would bless it to our hearts and help us as we come into this Christian, this uh, Christmas season here in, uh, in, in a few weeks, uh, that we will prepare our hearts and uh, receive uh, all the blessings of that season. And Lord, that we may look upon it as a time to celebrate the birth of Jesus. And now we pray, dear Father, now that you just bless all of us, dear God, with all of thy uh, 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 joy and that peace and everything that you have sent and now dear father i just pray that you'd bless all of those that are ill and are sick dear father oh dear god that you just be with those that are sad or depressed or those that are down and out or those that are in uh need joy in their life and father you just uh, uh reveal to them the joy of of jesus and all dear god and father i just pray now if anybody's sick, Lord, that you'd raise them up from their bed of affliction, dear God, that, Father, dear Father, dear Lord, that you would heal them of their illnesses, and Lord, that they could reach up into thy love and to thy joy and thy happiness, thy peace, dear God, and receive the healing uh, of uh, uh, their illness, Lord. If anybody has, anyone has cancer or heart disease or any of these things, Lord, that they would be healed now in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus. Oh, Father, I just pray, oh, dear Jesus, that you would... Uh, uh, Heal all forms of metastatic, all metastatic formations, uh, or any uh, uh, lymphomas, uh, or any uh, uh, cancer of any kind that is forming or has been uh, formed in their uh, in the bodies of anyone, Lord, that needs healing of that. And Lord, dear Father, I just pray that you would just cast out all tumors, dear God, that are appearing in in, uh, in any form in anybody, any any body in their body anywhere. And Lord, uh, anything from uh, colon cancer, dear God, to lung cancer, to liver cancer. And I pray that if there be any tumors uh, forming uh, upon their brain or in their brain or uh, uh, under their brain or anywhere in the cranial cavity, dear God. Father, I just pray that you would just heal them of that now. Oh, Lord Jesus, that you would just uh, cause that to depart. We just... We ask for that to depart in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, cause all tumors to depart 
Oh, dear God, from anywhere in that cranial cavity and from anywhere in the body of anyone. Oh, dear God, any kind of formation, uh, anything beginning to form, any kind of tumor begin to be formed, that it would dry up down and be cast out and totally depart in the name of Jesus. Father, I just pray. Oh, dear, dear Jesus, oh, Father, in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, that you would heal people of any form of, uh, of uh, epileptic type of seizures, uh, Lord, or anything, any kind of electrical storms or failure of the synapses in the brain or any other thing like that, Lord, that would bring on a, a seizure, dear God, that you would heal them of that and cast out anything that's causing that. And Lord, anyone that has Alzheimer's, dear God, I just pray, oh, Father, in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, that you would just cast out all uh, anything that would cause Alzheimer's. And Lord, dear God, any of the symptoms of Alzheimer's, that you would take away those symptoms and we would restore that brain to perfect order and restore their memory to better than it was before. Just restore the memory of those with lost memory from any type of, any type of uh, symptoms of lost memory. And give them a, a wonderful memory of everything better than they had before and strengthen their mind in every way. And Father, we pray that you would help people with the blood flow to the mind and with the oxygen, with the blood flow to their brain, to their cranial area. Dear God, the, uh, the, and the oxygenization of the blood. Oh, dear God, and the oxygen saturation will be perfect and the blood flow will be perfect and will not be hindered by any plaque or any low blood pressure caused by anything. And Lord, dear Father, I just pray in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, that you would heal people of any kind of a heart disease or heart problem. Father, just uh, we pray that uh, you would uh, heal them of, uh, of any, any kind of a uh, a lack of integrity of the heart muscle uh, to heal them of any kind of failure of the uh, of the electrical uh, conduction in the in the heart, dear God, or any failure of the proper pace to be maintained that the ticker would tick right on to many many years, and those muscles would keep uh, uh, form, uh, forming their job for many 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 years, and they would have a good strong heart, a good strong heart, and all of its pulses would be correct in on time. And Father, dear God, supply the blood to all the organs. And Father, I pray that there be any plaque interfering with the flow of the blood to the heart, that you would remove that, that you would cause that to depart now in the name of Jesus. Cause all that plaque to be, be to depart from the uh, from all of the vessels, all of the blood vessels in the body. Just remove it and cause there to be no hardening of the arteries, no high blood pressure or low blood pressure, but perfect flow of the blood, perfect oxygenization of the blood. And Lord, dear God, that you would just cast out all of that uh, that plaque that forming, especially in the coronary vessel. Oh, dear God, so that that blood flow would flow to the heart muscle. Oh, Father, in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus would be perfect. And dear God, that they would have perfect circulation of every kind. And Father, I pray now that you would touch people uh, that they would have uh, and it has lower back pain, any kind of back pain, dear Father. And Lord, I just pray in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, oh, dear God. Father, in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, that you would heal people of any kind of lower back, back pain, dear God, or, or any kind of a, a problem with their a curvature of their spine. Lord, that you just uh, heal that and then straighten the spine like it should be and cause the curvature to be correct and follow that there be any kind of fissures or, or cracks or anything in any of the vertebrae that you would heal those. And Lord, I follow in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you heal people, Lord, of a... Uh, 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 are there any kind of problem with the cartilage or the vertebrae and the spine and heal them of any spinal meningitis? Lord, dear Father, I just pray in the name of Jesus that you would heal them of any kind of multiple sclerosis. Dear God, any kind of uh, symptoms of lupus or lupus problems. And Lord, dear God, that you would heal people. Dear God, of any uh, 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 of any, 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 any kind of a, oh, Father, baby, pray about any kind of a shingles problems or, or symptoms of shingles, dear God. Father, dear God, that you would heal them of any kind of a skin disorders, anything like any kind of dermatitis or any kind of rashes. Father, just heal them of all of that, uh, those, uh, uh, any kind of skin disorders or of any kind, Lord. And, and Father, those, those uh, infections and those uh, skin 
problems that some of the uh, uh, the migrants and some of the refugees have, Lord, that you would heal them of that. And Father, dear God, I just pray in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, that you would heal them of any kind of lymphoma or uh, non-Hoskins lymphoma or any kind of other kind of metastatic formation or any kind of Hopkins diseases at all of any kind. And Father, I just pray in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, now that you would heal people of any kind of lung problem. Father, dear God, that you would cause them, dear God, their lungs, dear Father, to flow uh, and to breathe, uh, oh, dear God, and to have the correct flow of the, oh, breath, and, and Father, that you would uh, remove any kind of a intrusion or remove any kind of obstruction, any kind of COPD or emphysema, uh, Lord, that you would dry that up and call it, cast it out and cause it, the lungs to be clear so that they might breathe that wonderful uh, flow of oxygen and everything and oxygenate their blood correctly. And Lord, I, Father, I just pray that you would heal people of any kind of uh, of uh, inflammation or any kind of bronchitis or any kind of asthma or allergy or any kind of uh, or any kind of symptoms of allergy and Lord dear God that you would just cause their lungs to perform correctly in every way and heal them of any kind of flu bug or any kind of virus dear God whether it be COVID-19 or any other virus dear Jesus and Lord dear God now they, they uh, uh, cause them to be uh, free of, of smoking Lord that you would heal the craving the nicotine and Lord, just cause people to have a freedom of breath and a strength and an intactness and an integrity of, of the lungs that they may lay down those cigarettes and walk off from them, that you may restore their lungs and, and restore the areas that have been burnt up and, and the areas that have been destroyed by all of that smoking, that they would see, oh dear God, that they have no need of, of any kind of a drug or any kind of nicotine or any of that kind of thing they would reach up into thy high mountain of thy joy and realize that it is a thousand times greater than any kind of feeling that they would get from any kind of drug including nicotine or any kind of high or any kind of good feeling or any kind of comfort or anything else they might get from cigarettes lord if they'll lay them down and lord our father in the name of the holy son jesus i pray now lord that you'd heal people of any form of diabetes dear god i just pray oh god in the name of thy holy son jesus father that you would uh, cause all of the endocrine uh, uh, system to function properly and all the kidneys to function properly. Lord, dear God, that's cause them uh, the, the, the pancreal output to be perfect and in harmony of every kind and flow perfectly in the right way and the right chemical balance and the right hormonal balance. Dear God, and I pray, dear God, our Lord, that you just touch uh, uh, them, uh, their blood sugar, uh, anybody that's perfect, uh, they'll be perfect blood sugar and perfect balance in the uh, perfect balance of the blood sugar, and perfect balance in the hormones of every kind. And uh, Lord, dear God, and, and that you would heal any uh, of the uh, results of, of diabetes or any of the damage caused by diabetes and be with them in there uh, and protect their extremities and protect their heart and all the organs of the body and lord just heal them of any any kind of a uh, form of diabetes whatsoever heal all diabetes dear god in the name of the holy son jesus now and protect them from any damage caused by any of the symptoms of diabetes and father i pray now that you would heal people of all forms of of a uh, uh, liver uh, problems of a cirrhosis dear god any form of cirrhosis of the liver or any kind of hepatitis of the liver. And oh, dear God, now that you would cause their, their that liver damage to be mitigated. And Lord, dear God, you would come in and restore that liver by the, uh, thy hand. Dear God, that uh, Joel 2.25, that thou would restore all of the liver that's been eaten up and cause them, dear God, to lay down that bottle and never come back to it. All the things, all the results that have been caused by all that alcohol and everything, that they would lay it down, walk off from it, and never come back and never feel the need of it again, that you might restore their liver to perfect working order. And Lord, dear God, now that you would get cause people to be healed of every addiction to every drug dear god that all oh, father day lord is able to uh, would, would see uh, the power uh, and the joy and the, and, and the lord to grant them lord a uh, uh, freedom from addiction and lord dear god that you would heal people of all addiction to cocaine crack cocaine methamphetamine any of the barbiturates any of the opioids dear god heal them of any any of those drugs uh, or uh, pain pills or pain uh, uh, killers or any of those kinds of things dear god to heal them of all fentanyl all addiction, methamphetamine addiction, uh, peanut barbital addiction, dear God, opiate addiction, all of any kind, oh dear God, and all the oxycontin addictions and everything, Lord, that you just let them lead them up into the high mountain of joy, oh dear God, that they would reach up into that joy of that you have for them, there's a thousand times greater than anything, any drug, any kind of buzz, any kind of 
any, any kind of high, any kind of euphoria, any kind of uh, of, of a, a pleasure or, power, or enjoyment or joy or, or, or any kind of rush feeling or speedy feeling or anything else that they might give them that drug that you will let them see how that our joy is a thousand times greater that they may lay down those drugs and never come back one and you may heal them of the physical addiction heal them of the mental spiritual and emotional and physical addiction to all those drugs Lord and lead them into thy joy oh dear God and my pray dear God now Lord that you would break all those addictions in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, and for your glory, and give them the joy that is a thousand times greater than anything any drug can give them. And Father, now I just pray in the name of, the, of Jesus, Lord, that you would heal people of any uh, lack of integrity of the bones, Lord, of any kind of a fissure or fracture of any bones in the body, Lord, that you would heal that and make it strong, that you would heal them of any osteoporosis, dear God, and, and strengthen it and solidify those bones and cause them to have good, strong, intact and bones full of all perfect integrity that they may dance in the spirit, Lord. Oh, dear God, now that you'll get heal them of any kind of... Uh, arthritis or rheumatism or rheumatoid arthritis or any kind of pain or problem with their joints or any problem with the hinging action of their joint Lord that you would perfect that Lord and all that up and perfect it by thy Holy Spirit and Father we, I just pray in the name of thy Holy Son Jesus that you would oh Father that you would heal people of any kind of knee pain or knee problem or, or have any problem with the hinging of the knees oh dear God just heal them of all problem uh, with any kind of the fluids or anything in their knees Lord and uh, cause perfect synovial fluid and everything to flow correctly and everything in the hinging action to be perfect and Lord if there be any problem with any of the hinging action of the hip bones dear God the Lord that you would cause uh, the hip joints Lord that you would cause those uh, to be uh, healed in any fracture or any fissure in the hip dear God, bones dear God that you would heal them down the neck of Jesus and Father I pray dear God Lord uh, any there any fracture or, or fissure or anything in the uh, in the uh a uh, femur in the upper leg bone or any of those things, dear God, Father. Oh, dear God, Lord, now in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, Lord, that you just cause people to be free of all osteoporosis of every kind, every bone disease of every kind, every bone cancer of every kind, freedom of, of uh, leukemia of every kind, and Lord, have that perfect balance in their corpuscles of all the red blood cells and all the, the white blood cells, and, and uh, Lord, it's here. The uh, flow and the creation, and uh, oh, dear God, and the production of the red blood cells would be perfected, dear God, and in harmony of every kind, and all cast out all the leukemia of every kind, and all bone catcher of every kind, and cause them to have perfect intact bones full of integrity and perfect arth per perfect joints, uh, complete and intact, full of in all integrity and intact. Now, and they, they may dance in the spirit and jump and shout upon thy holy ground right now, Lord, if they may jump upon thy holy ground and dance and, and uh, jump and shout and dance in the spirit that uh, she may take the shackles from their feet that they may let them dance that you may that they may shout 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 all, it all out shout out all the fear and doubt and doubt shout out all that fear and doubt Lord because these are the things that we can do without and shout out all the diseases and shout out all the bone problems and all the joint problems and everything because these are the things we can do without shout 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 it all out shout out all the fear and doubt shout out all the things we can do without these are the things we can do without oh dear god in the name of the holy son jesus that they may all pick up those crutches and throw them at the devil chase him out of the room chase him out of the building or out of the church oh there god just chase him out and uh, uh jump up out of the wheelchairs or dance in the spirit and jump and shout lord and oh dear god just give that wheelchair a shove at the devil so hard that he will be uh, uh collapsing that and wheelchair <laughs> and lord that you may shove him on back right right on back to where he come from and tell him to never send that wheelchair back again, never send crutches back again, never create any more problem with the bones in any any way, or the muscles in any way. Father, in the name of our Holy Son, Jesus. And Father, now we just pray, Lord, that you just bless and heal people from all forms of migraines, all forms of headaches in every form. Any of the pain caused by migraines, any of the nervous problems caused it, causing it, Lord, or any of the any results of it or the causes of the migraine headaches or any other headaches free people from that pain heal them as I say of lymphoma and tumors of every kind Lord that they may all they cause of the lymphoma and the tumors and all the depart now in the name of the Holy Son Jesus and now Father I pray that you would uh, touch our leaders of our country oh Father there God to give them a spirit of wisdom and understanding that they may have grateful hearts for all the uh, tremendous price of bloodshed 
and death that was paid to buy this country and to buy all of our freedoms and liberties that uh, that within their hearts might dwell up a, 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 a spirit of great gratitude for that sacrifice and for all of that that went on before them and Lord that they would have a great sense of gratitude for our flag and what it stands for and they may uh, Lord influence others to have the same Lord that you would give them a character and an integrity dear God and a forthrightness and a transparency and an honesty, uh, the realization of the necessity of honesty and integrity. Oh, dear God, that those under their tutelage or those, dear God, under their uh, influence, those looking to them as role models, those looking to them, dear God, uh, for their character and their honesty to, for something to emulate. That they would see that they that our leaders of our country appreciate the sacrifices that was given by the people that went on before. They would appreciate the blood that was shed and the people that died for this country and they would uphold that and they would uphold and bless and honor those that have gone on before Lord dear God that they would see that and be able to emulate that character and that true honesty and integrity and, and Lord and forthrightness and transparency that the people of our leadership has Lord that the leaders would have that and have the wisdom to lead and the vision to lead and the vision to know where to lead and Father we pray now in the name of our Holy Son Jesus you would just touch all of our governors as and all uh, everything from the top to the bottom, dear God, that you touch our governors and our city and our county and our, our state leadership and national leaders and all of them, Lord. The, uh, dear God, that, uh, with that spirit of wisdom and understanding, that spirit of character and that spirit of integrity and that spirit of honesty and transparency and, and forthrightness and, and uh Standing up with a strong backbone to oppose all evil and all all loss of integrity, to oppose all uh, all dishonesty and all depravity, to, to oppose uh, oh dear God with the righteousness that they understand the righteousness uh, and all that would stand up and raise a standard against all of the uh, all, all any kind of corruption. Dear God and Lord, that they would be a great influence to those that are looking to them for something to emulate, that they're looking to them, uh, looking for them to uh, see their honor and integrity and understand, uh, Lord, uh, uh, what they uh, have uh, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to, that they can uh, view them as a role model. Lord, that you'd make them a role model, that you'd make them an example that could be emulated and that they'll have that character and strength and honesty that is deserving of emulation. And they'll understand that they have a duty to deserve that emulation, to, to, to express that character and strength to all those under their influence. And they would value that, and they would value the place and the position that they have, that it is a position where they can stand up for the rights, for the righteousness. And uh, they can express character and integrity and honesty, and that will be emulated. And dear God, Father, I just pray that you have appreciation for all the th the people that went before and shed their blood and give their life and everything to buy the liberties and freedom of this country. And for they would have a great appreciation for the foundation upon which this country was built upon the Judeo-Christian principles and all those principles like that that it was built upon. Dear God, and the Jesus Christ, of course, being the cornerstone, but the Judeo-Christian principles that they built the country and the laws upon, Lord, that they would uphold those. And now, Father, I just pray that you would bless all of our teachers, all of our uh, all of our private and public school teachers. Lord, dear God, in this time of turmoil and all, bless them that they would have a strong backbone and stand up against evil, stand up against dishonesty, stand up against lack of integrity and character, stand up against all those things that are not keeping with uh, those uh, things which we die, our forefathers died for and shed their blood for. They're not standing that, that they will stand up for the flag and what it stands for and stand up for those honorable men with character and integrity that went on before us and stand up for the values which they represented and be uh, teachers and professors in uh, 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 the universities and our teachers of our public and private school, be teachers and professors that can uh, be emulated and that can be role models that the students and those under their tutelage and uh, those under their influence would have role models that they can emulate that have character and integrity and honesty and everyone can see that they have character. That they, they can see and understand that they have a real character and a real integrity and a real honesty and a real transparency. May they show forth that character back before the world, before everyone, and stand up against the, those things which are coming against it. And now, Father, I just pray, dear God, that you would bless all of our police officers, dear God. 
Oh, dear God, just touch them right now. Dear God, and protect them from any kind of violent acts, any kind of corruption. Dear God, protect them against any kind of aggressive action against them and to harm them. Lord, as they would be protected against a harm to themselves and their family and make it home every evening and every night to be with their families or after their shift to make it home to be with their with their families, Lord, without harm to themselves and their family. And Lord, if they would live out their career, their 20, 30 years or whatever they are on the, uh, that they decide to spend upon the police force and it would go well and would go without, uh, without, uh, uh, without violent incident that would create harm to themselves and their family. That you would protect them in that way, that you guard them in that way, and then make it to the end of their career as police officers with a great sense of pride and great sense of, uh, of ability to look back and see all the many things that they've done and accomplished to uphold the liberties and freedom of this country by upholding the, our laws and by uh, upholding uh, the law and order. And they'll understand that they have served well and be proud of that and have a sense of reward upon their heart for having served well and uphold hell on law and order that protects our freedom and liberties. And Lord, Father, I pray now for our missionaries on the foreign fields. We protect them, dear God, against harm to themselves and their families. Dear God, of every kind from any kind of persecution. And Lord, that you would give them a great evangelistic spirit, that you would give them a great love for the lost and give them wisdom to win the lost and give them a wisdom and understanding and give them a strong character and integrity and honesty and give them all the things they need to win and to witness. Oh, Father, dear God, that you'd give them all the support they need monetarily and financially and, and uh, prayer support of every kind, that they may be strong in their work. And Lord, that they may come back after their tour of service. Oh, dear God, uh, uh, with, uh, without harm to themselves or their families. And Lord, if they, may, if they uh, serve a, a career of uh, missionaries uh, for their full uh, life, their full 20, 30 years of their entire life, uh, as missionaries that you would protect them all that time against harm to themselves or their family. They'll come back at the end of that 20, 30, 40 years, whatever they serve <coughs> without any harm and with a great sense of pride in what they've accomplished. A great sense of reward, both now and in heaven, Lord, for dear God, a, a great sense of reward for all of the the souls that they've won and all the churches they've established. That you would enable them to, to establish large works and be, and Lord, look back upon it with great sense of reward and pride. Oh, dear God, just bless them in every way and protect them in every way. We ask in the name of the Holy Son Jesus. And now you, we pray, dear Father, that you would uh, protect all of our ranchers. And all of our farmers, dear God, just protect all of our ranchers, especially those down south. Dear Father, that you would protect them against harm to themselves and their families. Protect them, dear God, against uh, uh, any kind of a vandalism against their barns or their houses or their equipment. Oh, dear God, of any kind or against their livestock of any kind, or horses, cows, or other livestock. You protect those horses and cows and livestock against any kind of pest or any kind of uh, disease or anything coming against them or attack them. And Lord, dear God, protect them against any kind of transigence or any kind of squatting upon their land and give them a protection of their homes and their families and bring them great prosperity. That everything will work out well for their productivity and for their prosperity. And bless them with thy grace and thy strength and with thy wisdom to, uh, to be able to get through the, the times that they have. Oh, dear God, now, uh, uh, with uh, the problems and all. And Lord, dear God, now we pray in the name of the Holy Spirit, you should bless all of our farmers. Dear God, that they would have great prosperity, Lord, and uh, protect all their crops and everything that has been harvested and all the things that may yet be to be harvested. The Lord, you would protect them and provide them the prices that they need, provide the supply lines like they should be. And Lord, everything will work right for them and protect all of their equipment, protect their equipment, all their tractors, combines, and other equipment against any kind of vandalism, protect their barns against vandalism, their houses against vandalism. And Lord, uh, that there may not be any harm come to themselves or their family. Protect, it, protect their uh, uh, crops and everything against any kind of pest or any kind of diseases and anything coming upon, upon their tail, all of their livestock, their horses and their cows and other uh, livestock, Lord, against diseases, against being a, uh, any kind of a, a vandalism or anything. And Lord, their God, Father, be paying in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, you giving them great prosperity, Lord, and a great uh, uh, enjoyment and a great reward of their work. 
reward them in their work and reward them in the service that, that they have to this country and providing uh, the breadbasket and providing the food and everything to this country. And all those that run in the, uh, those that are working in the orchards and everything like that for the providing that fruit to the country, that you would reward them and protect them and protect their property. And now we pray in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, Lord, I, now that you would just um, touch all of our, um, our uh, men and women in the Army, the Air Force, the Navy, the Marine Corps, the Coast Guard, the Space Force, all of our armed services of every kind, all of our reservists, all of our Army Reserve, all of our National Guard, and all of our Air Force Reserve, Navy Reserve, and all the Marine Corps Reserves, and everything, Lord, the Coast Guard. We pray now that in the name of the Holy Son, you should bless them in every way. We keep them free of harm, keep them harm to themselves, and they, uh, free from harm to themselves and their family. They'll maybe make it back at the end of their tour free of harm. Those career soldiers, dear God, they, they will make it to the end of their 20 or their 30 years or whatever that they serve uh, with a great sense of reward for uh, doing a great job to protect the freedom and liberties of this country. And then look back and see uh, the marvelous things and their character will be built and their wisdom will be built. They'll have wisdom and understanding and a great character will be built and they will look back with great reward upon their time of service and protect them, dear God, in every way against harm to themselves and their family while they're serving. And they may make it back, uh, back uh, uh, afterwards uh, with a uh, without undue uh, uh, wounds, uh, uh, permanent any kind of permanent wounds or, or permanent damage or anything, any kind of uh, 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 anything uh, protect them against anything coming to their families, Lord. Protect them against harm against of themselves or their families. In the name of the Holy Son Jesus, I pray. And now, Father, I pray. Dear God, that you would just touch all of our animals and protect them. Dear God, protect all of our all of our pets in the name of the Holy Son Jesus. Now, protect them, dear God. Oh, Father, against any kind of attack by wild animals. Protect them, dear God, against any kind of diseases or any pests. And Lord, dear God, protect them that they would be uh, provided with the food and everything that they need. Dear God, and protect them, dear God, that they would be provided, uh, Lord, uh, with a uh, uh, good wholesome food and everything that they needed. The supply lines would would remain free in the uh, and Lord, dear God, now that you would cause the the, 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 the smaller uh, animals to be protected from the larger ones, and Lord, dear God, that you would just cause uh, uh, all of our uh, all of our, our homeless pets to find forever homes. You'd give all of our homeless uh, uh, or all of our homeless animals. Uh, be uh, uh, will have forever homes, dear God, with a loving atmosphere and loving families. Put them with those forever homes with loving families, with a, a heavenly atmosphere and a loving atmosphere and a joyful atmosphere and a place where there are people that can play with them and enjoy them and take pride in them. And Lord, that you will have a wonderful place to run and a wonderful place and a good wholesome food and everything will be provided for them. Lord, dear God, just protect them in that way. Have them be adopted, oh dear God, by loving families in the name of the Holy Son Jesus. And now, and for all of our homeless people, Lord, that you will provide them with all the sustenance they need and all the things that they need in the name of the Holy Son Jesus and all. Dear God, now we pray for uh, for the supply kind lines to have, uh, have every in every way that you would Open up those supply lines and you'd, you'd deal with all the bottlenecks and you'd put wisdom in there and you'd send laborers, laborers you'd, send, you'd send workers, you'd send employees and everything that is needed to maintain the supply line. But you'd bless our truckers and send more. And Lord, dear God, bless all of our, our ship lanes and our ships uh, and all of our docks and everything, Lord. Uh, and Lord, uh, and, and protect against bottlenecks and protect against slowness. And Lord, that you protect all of our warehouses and all of our delivery people and all of our FedEx and all of our UPS and postal services and every other form of delivery, dear God, that we have and protect them that it, there would be no bottlenecks in any of that. And Lord, this calls the supply line and all of the factories and everything and everything of all the productivity of, the, of those supplies and everything go right politically and everything like that. And Lord, dear God, protect, dear God, for all of those, those, uh, uh, workers in all those areas and all of our manufacturers and our leaders uh, and our uh, uh, those that uh, run the, the uh, uh, manufacturing concerns and the, the corporations and everything and everything Lord would would uh, work without uh, uh, being uh, uh, having those uh, bottlenecks Lord and you would work it out where they would have the employees that they need and Lord now we pray in the name of Jesus just protect those supply lines and now we pray Father that you would bless us this evening, dear God, 
Uh, Lord, to have a wonderful evening, a enjoyable evening, a nice time of prayer, a nice time uh, of, a, of, a, of a, a praying and reading the Bible and uh, and enjoying the Spirit of the Lord. Or give a, and let the Spirit come down upon us, uh, Father, in a great, sweet, sweet Spirit. That it be a sweet, sweet parent in our home and with our families and everything, Lord. And you'll have us a wonderful time like that and a, a wonderful, good uh, rest of the afternoon and evening, Lord, and a good uh wonderful, relaxing, restful night's sleep that we would wake up full of bim and bigger tomorrow to serve you better and to serve you with joy and to serve you with energy. Lord, that you would just rest us in every way and Lord, continue to bless thy word that we have studied and we've read and Lord, dear God, Father, I pray now in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, oh, dear God, that you would heal people of any kind of terminal, dear God, or any kind of incurable illness Dear God, it's so-called, it's been called incurable. And anybody that has been given that that diagnosis of have, ha, having an incurable or a terminal illness, that you'd be with them now, Lord, and protect them and give them healing of that disease, of that illness. Heal all those diseases. Heal people, dear God, we pray. Dear God, of any kind of, a, uh, oh, Father, migraine, headaches, dear God, or, or pain uh, of any kind caused by that. Uh, heal them of any kind of tumor upon their brain, in their brain, or under their brain, or any kind of problem with their, uh, any kind of uh, uh, problem with a, uh, with a, uh, electrical storms caused by uh, either uh, epileptic uh, uh, symptoms or any other other type of thing, Lord, that you would cause a free flow of the, of everything to work well there in their brain, and you would heal people of Alzheimer's, dear God, and give, give them their memory back, and oh, dear God, that their memory be better than ever before, Lord, you would heal people of all heart problems, dear God, or heart diseases of every kind, and give them a full uh, uh, use of everything, Lord, that God followed to do, yeah, you, that you would uh, cast out all of that plaque and anything that would be interfering with the blood flow there, God, give people perfect blood flow and, oh, and deal with it and free them of all high blood pressure, low blood pressure and any kind of failure of the oxygenation of the blood and any kind of plaque that you would cast it all out, dear God, in the name of Jesus and Lord, heal people of all multiple sclerosis and all spinal meningitis, dear God and all uh, uh, spinal miscurvature and everything and there, any kind of pain in their lower back, Lord, did heal people, dear God, of all that scabies, Lord, and any kind of, uh, uh, of dermatitis or anything, Lord, you would heal people, dear God, Father, of, of all of the uh, uh, shingles or any of those things or any kind of uh, arthritis, arthritis, rheumatism, Lord, any kind of thing, or any pain problem with their joints, dear God, whatsoever, any kind of problem with their knees or, or the knee joints, there's no fluidity, any kind of problem with the hip joints, dear God, any kind of problem with the hip fissures or fractures anywhere in any of their bones, upper leg, dear God, or pelvis, probably with the hip, heal people who got any kind of problem with their lungs, dear God, and, oh, dear God, they'll breathe their lungs, Lord, but they didn't breathe that oxygen pure and free, uh, full and all that, you're going to heal people of any kind of addiction to drugs or any kind of addiction to alcohol, they, they, they'll be able to lay down the cigarettes, lay down the alcohol, and free up them lungs, Lord. Heal that cirrhosis of the liver to heal any kind of hepatitis of the liver. Just God, give them good free liver, a good, a good, uh, uh, we just restore that liver in the name of Jesus. And heal people of all forms of diabetes, Lord. Heal them. Oh, that they may have perfect blood sugar there. And you balance their blood sugar, balance their hormones, balance their pancreas output, their kidney output. Oh, dear God, would work perfect, Lord. All, I, I, all of their any kind of system work perfect. There, God, I pray in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus. Now, dear God, that you just protect people about and heal them of any kind of form of osteoporosis, any kind of brilliance of the bone, any kind of a leukemia or any kind of bone cancer, any, give them a good structure, good skeletal structure. They may dance, dance in the spirit and dance out all the fear and doubt, dance out all these things that we can do without. And now, Father, I pray that you would continue to heal of all these diseases, heal of all the tumors, anything, any kind of tumor upon the brain, in the brain, in the brain. Lord, just heal it and, and just cast it out, I pray in the name of Jesus, heal them and it'll cast out tumors, cast out lip over, heal people of Hoskins to the point, any other, uh, not Hoskins to the point. Oh, there, God, anything, Lord, like that. And Lord, I Father, I pray you'll give us a good evening, a good joyful evening, a good healing evening, a good healing, full of illness and disease. Lord, a good evening and a joy, believing it. A healing full of thy Holy Spirit, of thy power that will push overshadow us. And protect us to, uh, tonight and give us a good night's sleep and a restful night's sleep. Then we may wake up a full of bill and bigger tomorrow to serve you with joy and enthusiasm and with a, a good uh, uh, spirit of, of a bill and bigger and enjoyment. And Lord, uh, it's, uh, we pray now in the name of the Holy Son Jesus. Oh, dear God, just bless us in every way and enlighten us in every way and give us wisdom in every way and give us healing in every way. We ask all these things in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, dear Father. 
Praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. 